Hello everybody, hope you're all well. In this video, we are going to repair this PlayStation 5, which has a no video output issue. So when you power it on, uh, it boots up to a white light, which is absolutely fine. However, uh, the signal coming out the HDMI port doesn't actually display on the monitor. So the monitor locks, but you don't actually ever get any display. So uh, let's uh, get into it. For your Xbox and PlayStation repairs, visit consoletherapy.com. Right, so there are plenty of videos out there showing you how to open up a PlayStation 5. So I'm going to fast forward through that. You don't need me explaining you how to do that. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at the motherboard to see what is going on with this PlayStation 5. Good news is this one hasn't been opened. So I'm wondering whether it's just an HDMI port. Right, so there we go, we've got the motherboard out. So obviously first things first is what we need to do is have a look around the HDMI port to see if that is causing us an issue. So let's get under the microscope and see what we've got. Right, so here we are underneath the microscope. The HDMI port itself does look okay. Uh, doesn't look damaged physically in any way and the output side looks okay as well, just check that. So what we'll do, we'll just buzz the actual pins through. Um, each of these pins on the HDMI ports, you've got 19 pins. Each one of those should uh, relate to a certain reading. So I have my uh, multimeter in diode mode, red probe on ground, and we come in with the black probe, which is gonna go from pin 19, which is this end, all the way down, right? That should be reading about 0.68, a little bit low, 0.65, that could just be my leads. Pin 18 should read around 0.5. Yeah, that's a little bit high as well, 0.64. Uh, this is ground, so that should be pretty much zero. Yep. Uh, pin uh, 16 should be around 0.65. That one looks good. Uh, pin 15. Similar, should be around 0.65. Pin uh, 14's not connected. 13 should be around 0.68. Again, a little bit low. Uh, 12 should be about 0.8. Round about right. 11 is ground, so that should be zero, correct. 10. Should be around 0.8, that's good. Uh, same for uh, 9, 8 is ground. It should be 0, 7. Should be around 0.8, yep. Same for 6. 5 is ground, correct. And then 3 and 4 should be around 0.8. Four, 0.83, 0.8, uh, and then pin number two is ground, so that should be zero. Yep, and then pin one should be around 0.8. Yep, which is good. So these readings up here, pin 19, they are a little bit off. That should be a little bit higher than that. The pins themselves do look all right. That one is quite high. So pin 18, that is quite high. That should be really, should be about 0.5. So that doesn't actually point to a problem with the HDMI ports. Well, I've just noticed, I don't know if you can actually see, but on pin 19 and 18, I think it just might be 
manufacture. There's a couple of little marks on the actual pins. So I don't think they're damaged. I think that's just excess flux as from when uh, obviously the PS5 was manufactured. So anyhow, um, next thing to check is these filters, All right? So uh, they should read, um, have a reading from top to bottom, but they shouldn't have a reading diagonally. All right, so I'm just gonna pop the multimeter into continuity mode, All right? So it beeps. So these should beep top to bottom as we go through them, these little filters. Should I do it? Shouldn't beep diagonally, no, good. Top to bottom, yep, good. Yep, diagonally, no, good. Yep, good. Good. Okay, so the filters themselves are okay. So next stop on our journey to find out what's going on is this Panasonic HDMI retimer IC. Now we can get uh, quite a few different readings from around the IC itself. So multimeter in diode mode now, um, and we put our red probe on ground. And as you see around the retimer IC, uh, or in HDMI encoder, uh, there are a number of capacitors. These uh, first three should be around 0.24. Again, that's a little bit low. Let's check the next one. Yeah, it should be higher than that. Nope, should be looking around about uh, 0.25 for these readings along here. Bottom two, first one should be around 4.8. So that's within tolerance. This bottom one should be around 3.6. Again, that's within tolerance. And then the ones along the bottom should be around 2.4. Again, that's quite low. Again, that's a little bit low. 0.19 should be about 0.24. Five. That one's a little bit higher, I think, was it? Let's just check that one. Yeah, 0 0.19. 0 0.19, okay, it's the same. And again, same for these two here. Yeah, so these readings along these sides, they seem a little bit low to me. Although they are all the same, which is a good sign, they seem a little bit low. So what I'm suggesting we do, because of HDMI port looks good, because the filters look good, we could probably try changing this and see where that takes us, right? So this is the encoder, HDMI encoder I see, which obviously takes all the signals from around the board, from the APU, uh, and then filters and resyncs all of those signals before it outputs to the HDMI port. Now, if this isn't um, working correctly, then it could obviously cause no video output issues. So what I think we're gonna do is we'll replace that. Oh, we've got some in stock and see if that resolves our issue first of all. So let's get into that. So first things first, just to help us remove the IC, we're gonna come in, run, a load of flux around the outside. We're going to come in with our heat gun and our temperature is going to be 480. And our airflow is going to be at around 75%. So working all the way around, warming the board up first of all. making sure the whole area gets nice and warm. And then we move the heat gun a little bit closer to the IC. 
moving it around constantly. And then eventually what we'll find is we can gently lift off the IC. Move to one side. Now, while the board is still warm, what we're going to do is come in with some solder wick, remove the leaded solder that it was manufactured with, So just coming around and then removing this leaded solder from the pads, making sure we don't touch any of the capacitors. Like so. Just remove any of that from there. And then what I like to do We'll give the whole area a clean up first of all with some IPA. So we clean up the whole area. Now, because these Panasonic ICs, they've got multiple pins on them, they can be quite tricky to solder back on to the board. So what I like to do is actually use some solder paste. So what we do is just run our solder paste across all the pads. Now this solder paste has got flux already built into it, right? So you haven't got to worry too much about bridging the pins because the flux will actually pull out uh, any bridges correctly. So we come in with our replacement IC. Now this one is pulled from a donor board. So it's pretty much already pre-tinned, right? So it's already got solder on there from the previous. Sometimes what you can do is actually just pre-tin the, uh, the IC itself. But this is already pre-tinned if that makes sense because it's from a donor board all right so what i like to do is just line up the ic roughly you don't have to get it bang on right that solder paste then grabs the ic for you which is great then come in with our air gun and we have dropped the airflow to 50 percent just place your tweezers on the IC so it doesn't move too much and then come in and just gradually warm up the outsides like so and then what you'll see is the solder paste will obviously start to melt once the board gets up to temperature as well all the way around Like so, as it starts to go. You can then remove your tweezers once it's starting to melt. Keep moving the heat gun around. And then what you'll find is the IC will jump into place. It just jumped into place there. So keep heating, keep heating. Give it a tiniest a little bit to nudge just to move it into the right position. Press down on it a little bit. 
you can manipulate it. And it's really easy to align and get into place. Like so. Pull your heat away. Put a tiny little bit of pressure on there. What you can then do, come around a little bit more flux. Come in with your fine tip soldering iron. And then just solder away any excess solder. Like so. Spin the board round. Like so. Now give the whole area a good clean up. Give it a good dousing. And then give the whole area a good clean. Now the thing to remember is because you've used solder paste, solder paste essentially is flux and very, very small solder balls. So you do need to make sure you clean the entire area really, really well. Okay, mop up any extra solder balls that you might see. Normally it's quite good to be honest, so, but just keep an eye out for them. So, wipe over the whole area. We'll give it a proper clean up later, but as you can see, the alignment is pretty goddamn good, right? I mean, it probably could do with moving maybe a micromillimeter across to the left, but all of the pins are connected, right? So using a solder paste, I just find it's just a bit of a quicker and easier job just to, um, you know, get the chip aligned. So I'll finish up clearing up the whole area and then what we'll do is give it a test. Right, so here we go, just temporarily put back together for testing. Let's Push the power button, here we go, blue light, and do we get any video output? Yes, we do. There we go, fixed. Right, so I need to put this all back together again. Um, let's, uh, and then get it tested. So there we go, everything put back together again, and we'll give this a good thorough testing. So. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, just a quick video really to show you, as it turns out, how to replace the HDMI encoder I see on a PlayStation 5. Hope that video was useful. As I say, thanks very much for watching. If it was useful, please consider giving us a thumbs up. That really does help us out. And please consider subscribing to the channel. We are uploading uh, videos weekly now. Uh, so more and more videos will be coming to the channel over the next few weeks. So also consider ticking the bell icon so you get notified when we upload a new video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.